The purpose of this video is to compare the relative decentralization of some well-known cryptocurrency platforms. So let's look at the facts to help us better analyze some of the top cryptocurrency networks. But first, some definitions. Consensus, in the context of a distributed ledger like Bitcoin, is an agreement between network participants on transactions, the order of those transactions, and the state of the network. General governance is simply how decisions are made for a state, organization, or people. Effective governance is the ability to make correct decisions for a state, organization, or people, and bring those changes to fruition. And finally, distributed ledger governance is the process by which decisions are made for distributed ledger platform, including code upgrades and how to allocate available resources. Now on to the examples. Since some platforms have been around for some time and others are newly launched, we will try to look at a few snapshots of each and future states if planned. We will also split up the decentralization of consensus from network governance since they may or may not use the same mechanisms. Time to dig in. Hedera decided to divide the consensus mechanism from governance, which is a bit different from the other platforms we will discuss. At open access, Hedera's consensus was reached between 10 nodes run by the council members. Council members and their additional nodes are being added on a monthly basis. Hedera council members are multi-billion dollar enterprises such as LG, Google, Tata Communications, and Nomura. All 39 council members are expected to be on board by the end of 2021, and additional trusted nodes will follow. The plan is to add anonymous nodes, which may number in the thousands in the years to follow. Each node will be weighted in consensus based off the amount of HBAR, Hedera's native cryptocurrency, is staked or proxy staked to those nodes. The initial governance was also the responsibility of the first 10 council members. When all 39 members have joined the council, they will be diversified on six different continents in many governmental jurisdictions and will represent 11 unique industries. But those aren't the only ways the council is diversified. It will also be diversified over time. All council members, with the exception of Swirls, are term limited to no more than two three-year terms. There's an important distinction between how Hedera and Bitcoin consensus is reached. For Bitcoin, approximately every 10 minutes, a miner wins the right to create a block by running computers to solve difficult math problems. That miner then determines the transactions that will go into that block and the order of those transactions. The block is then propagated to the rest of the network. In the case of Hedera, the originator of a transaction submits that transaction to the node of its choice, or even multiple nodes. That node then propagates that transaction to the rest of the nodes. When a supermajority of stake-weighted nodes have received the transaction, consensus is reached. The order of those transactions is determined by the median node timestamp at consensus. In the early days of Bitcoin, just a few miners and nodes were responsible for consensus. In a few years, both nodes and miners spread throughout the world. Some consolidation of mining hash rate did occur because of the emergence of mining pools and miners gravitating to areas of cheap electricity. There are still thousands of full nodes today, similar to where we expect Hedera to be at a similar point of maturity. Miners are still spread throughout the world, but mining pool consolidation also continues. Governance in the beginning was pretty simple. I'll let early Bitcoin lead developer Gavin Andreessen explain. The, the problem is different people have different ideas about what the govern, governance process ought to be or even what it is or even what it was. Um, if you go back in history, it, it was really simple. It was whatever Satoshi decided at the beginning. And you know, that's really where we started. We had one, one, one source code. We had one pseudonym person uh, who made all the decisions. Four years later, the system of Bitcoin governance had not decentralized very much. And again, I'll let Gavin explain. At this point, there are, you know, five people who have commit access to the GitHub Bitcoin source tree. If there was something that we just seemed like we couldn't come to consensus, I'd make the decision. I would just arbitrarily decide we're going to go this way instead of that way. 
And, and I think that that worked. I was acting as benevolent dictator. Prior to recording that video in 2015, developers apparently didn't have an issue implementing what they believed Bitcoin required. That changed just two years later. In 2017, Bitcoin governance failed to implement a solution addressing the network nearing capacity. The inability for the Bitcoin governance to properly act allowed fees to climb to over $50 in December of that year. The contention surrounding the attempt to fix this simple problem caused a fork of the network into Bitcoin and the competing network, Bitcoin Cash. I'll let you judge the effectiveness of governance during this time. Vladimir Vanderland took the job as Bitcoin lead developer from Gavin and after six years still holds that position. Today, just four mining pools have enough hash rate to control and make changes to the network. The top six mining pools are located in China and how they make their governance decisions is hard to determine. At launch, the EO's network consensus was determined by 21 block producers. The top 21 block producers are determined by the share of the EO's token staked to them by token owners. Though there are 21 block producing nodes, they take turns and only one of those nodes determines which transactions and the order of those transactions goes into a given block. This is similar to the winning miner for a given block on the Bitcoin network. Governance is not separated from consensus and these same 21 block producers also make decisions for the network. Early on, like Satoshi with Bitcoin, the founder of EOS, Dan Larimer, had significant influence, but the block producers made the ultimate decision. 15 out of the 21 block producers had to vote for a proposed change to the network for it to go into effect. According to Larimer, all block producers are trusted, highly vetted public individuals. The consensus and governance process for EOS has remained the same over the first three years, but the makeup of the nodes may not be as initially intended. The token holders staking or voting for block producers in theory has a democratic feel, but let's see if that democratic process has produced a decentralized result. According to the individual block producers websites, the primary function of 15 out of the 21 block producers is as EOS block producers. There's one that claims to be a blockchain research and development firm, and the final five are cryptocurrency exchanges. Only having representation from a narrow part of one industry may not allow the proper diversity of opinion to serve all EO stakeholders. They also don't have massive reputations in other businesses outside of crypto that they have to be concerned about when managing EOS. Nine of the 21 block producers are located in China, and a supermajority are located in Asia. The EOS constitution has changed in title only to the EOS user agreement due to the negative connotation the word constitution has with Chinese participants. Finally, a claim was made by one of the original block producers, EOS New York, that six of some of the top block producers were actually one entity. In the case of Ethereum, since launch, the consensus has looked very similar to Bitcoin. This will shake up a lot if the team is successful in implementing Ethereum too. The main difference between ETH1 and ETH2 is the influence of the miners will shift to the token stakers, although I'm not sure of the impact of the beacon chain on decentralization. Up until this point, Vitalik Buterin has been the driving force in Ethereum's governance. He is often called Ethereum's benevolent dictator. Like Bitcoin, miners have shifted to mining pools. It's actually even more centralized in the case of ETH with only two miners having more than 50% of the hash rate. Our final example is Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Satoshi's vision. The mechanisms are the same as with ETH and Bitcoin, but there have been far fewer nodes and miners. This has left it susceptible to attacks by a single entity for relatively little cost. Strong personalities are the driving force in the governance of these platforms. And when these entities could not agree, another contentious hard fork of the network occurred. Again, an example of ineffective governance. Another point is if those that have strong influence over the direction of these platforms, whether it's the developers, block producers, or mining pools, have the diversity of knowledge, expertise, and accountability to properly guide these networks as a group of 39 blue chip organizations will in the case of Hedera. 
I made every attempt to compile this information accurately, but that's no easy task. If there's a small portion that's not 100% perfect, please comment, but do not dismiss this entire video. When looking at these five platforms, all attempted to be decentralized to varying degrees of practical success, but I think some are arguably the most decentralized examples of DLT platforms. While in theory some of these platforms may be decentralized, in practice, Hedera will be one of the most, if not the most, decentralized platform in the world. I was shocked to hear one crypto influencer say that Hedera isn't even a cryptocurrency because he thought it was centralized. This sentiment is often parroted. I think an objective look at the facts makes this claim more of an excuse for both those making these claims and their followers not to look too deeply into Hedera. Some of these influencers may have ulterior motives and might know that once crypto enthusiasts start to do proper research into the platform, they will find all substance and no hype. I suggest doing your own research and coming to your own conclusions. Thanks for watching and good luck.